Hey guys, it's Big Mike. I'm adding this note to the recording after the webinar uh, has finished. Unfortunately, I had a blue screen in Windows during the webinar. It happened at about uh, minute 12 of the recording. And due to that, the first 12 minutes of the recording became corrupted on my system. So all I was able to salvage is audio. I could not make the video work. Uh, any more than what you're seeing in the recording. After minute 12 and after the blue screen, I came back into the webinar and everything was fine. So you'll have to just uh, uh, excuse that and do the best you can with the audio. Uh, use your imagination. Or if you want to see a screenshot of what the Superdome looks like, which is what Ray was talking about, you can find it in the webinar thread on BMT. I'm going to ask for your patience today. I'm kind of losing my voice. Uh, I know Ray has a lot of ground to cover today. He wants to talk about uh, Ninja Trader 8 and the new Superdome that they've developed, as well as uh, some detail about the new Ninja Script uh, code changes that are going to be part of Ninja Trader 8. I know that there's going to be a lot of questions from you guys. Um, so I just ask that you uh, try to keep them on topic as, as much as you can to what Ray is speaking to. Otherwise, we're going to end up with a, a webinar that goes in a hundred different directions. So just do the best that you can. Um, I also want to remind everybody that the webinar is being recorded, and I'll post the recording on BMT sometime tomorrow. Okay, guys, so with that, let's just go ahead and get started. And I'm going to turn things over to Ray. And Ray, you should have control now. Oh, Kevin, you have been presented yeah. show my screen. Here we go. Okay. Okay. Uh, I've got a PDF and I okay. can hear you. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Ray. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate the opportunity to come to the community and talk about what we're doing over here at Ninja Trader with Ninja Trader 8. As Mike said, uh, We've got a lot of stuff to uh, cover, and uh, Mike, you didn't mention it, and I'm not sure if it changed, but you had mentioned to me that we've got an hour. Is that still the case? Uh, yeah, I mean, we can we can go we can go longer as long as I can still talk. <laughs> Understood. Okay. So basically, I've got a, a pretty slim agenda. Uh, talking about the Superdome is my first order of business. Second, I'll talk a little bit about the uh, where we are at in terms of Ninja Trader development release date. I'm sure a lot of you are curious about that. And then I'll talk about uh, Ninja Script and some of the changes uh, we're making and, and kind of lock down on, on, on a number of different items uh, so that you guys know what to expect. And this is primarily geared towards people who are doing development work. Uh, Ray, before we before we go much further, is there a way that you can boost the volume a little bit? It's a little low on your let mic. Let me give me a second. Let me see what I can do. And uh, let me try and see. If I, I might lose you here. Let me try switching here. Okay. Testing one two three. Does that yeah? It's better? much better. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks, Ray. You bet. Okay. So let's just dive right into Ninja Trader 8 Superdome, and I'm going to launch Ninja Trader 8 here. And I'm going to uh, use the playback connection. We renamed Market Replay to Playback, and let me just connect up. And, and the reason for that was quite simple. We added the ability to replay historical data. Uh, obviously, market replay data is also historical, but what I mean by historical data is historical tick data that you would get from any market data provider, including ourselves, Kinetic, eSignal, for example, uh, versus just being limited to recording market replay data or getting that from our servers. And uh, I need this replay because I'm going to show you some things in the dome that uh, are new and shiny. So let me go ahead and just configure I'm going to uh, I've got data some data from December 3rd and I'm going to just uh, move the slider forward a little bit to uh, regular trading hours 
And let me open up a static Superdome. And I know it looks humongous to you on the screen, and there's a reason for that. Let me just uh, knock the size down. Uh, by default, when you first started, it's going to be this big. And if you had increased the size, NinjaTrader 8 persists the last size of your window, so it comes up in whatever last size uh, you had previously. Uh, one of the major things that was high in demand for our dome is adding the ability to have a volume profile. The the difficulty in that was when you start adding additional pretty significantly sized columns, you change the overall look and feel in the real estate. So the the challenge was to, to make sure that we provided the features that people wanted but not compromise anything in terms of uh, look and feel and usability that people who could probably care less about volume profile, uh, we didn't want to affect those people. So we believe that we've been able to, to design this in a way that uh, gives people who just want the NinjaTrader 7 style dome uh, and how they use it the same level of functionality or actually more functionality but use, usability is not hindered or changed in any way but also provide those people who want more the ability to add more to their dome. And so this is what the NinjaTrader 8 dome looks like as uh, some of you have seen in previous recordings or webinars, you know, we have uh, an added tab capability you can see here down where my mouse is. I've got one tab open, but I could have multiple tabs for uh, different markets. The uh, order entry interface is slimmed down. Uh, as you can see here, same type of setup. We've got instrument, quantity, time and force, account. Uh, what's different is that the ATM strategy information is now uh, contained inside this uh, what we call ATM strategy selector and if I want to create a ATM template uh, I could do so by selecting custom for example and this is where you would get your parameters for defining how you want your stops and targets submitted and your auto trails and break evens. Uh, a few things to note here uh, one of the things that we did add was the ability to add an infinite number of stop and target brackets with NinjaTrader 7 and before you were limited to only having three. Now you can have as many as you, you want. Uh, for the most part, I think three was more than sufficient, but we didn't have enough demand to, to expand on that. We have also added uh, the ability to use an MIT order for your profit orders, which actually there's two things there. We've added the capability for MIT orders in NinjaTrader 8, and we also added the ability to associate an MIT order to your target order. And the idea is real simple. You create your strategy. You can save them as templates, just like you did in NinjaTrader 7. Uh, the difference being, when you click on the strategy selector, you will see all your templates listed in this selector. You can select one. You can remove it if you don't want to have it anymore. You see to the left, there's a little eye here. This, if you hover on it, will give you a snapshot of all of the different parameters for that particular template. And you'll find in NinjaTrader 8 throughout the product, there is this eye, which obviously stands for information icon all over the place if you need to get some quick information. So let me just uh, hit play. Uh, so now we're playing market replay, and again, the look and feel is more or less the same, but there is definitely some polish or some uh, just kind of evolved look and feel. So a few things to point out. If you want to resize your dome, you can simply do so by you know moving it up or down. We'll uh, add more rows or take more rows away. If you recall in NinjaTrader 7, you actually had a set of property uh, for that. The order flags you know, work in the same manner, although they look a little bit differently. They've got a, a more of a, a uh, polished look. Uh, there's a limit order, MIT, you just would hit control and left mouse click. So that's what an MIT looks like. And uh, there's uh, the interface for entering a stop limit order and then a stop market order. So the, again, you know, the usability is the same. The order flags look a little bit uh, refined. 
All these colors, of course, are configurable, as you would expect. And let me cancel all these orders. If I right-click, select Properties, uh, we did add a number of market depth levels. So I have it defaulted to five, which is the maximum number you see in NinjaTrader 7. But if you want 10, you could uh, set it to 10 if you want. And you can see the layout of the properties, again, is very similar to NinjaTrader 7. Hit OK. And there you can see uh, NinjaTrader Dome with uh, with 10. So uh, some major changes. Let me go ahead and right click and select columns. And here we have by default three available additional columns uh, you can add to the super dome. I've got a, we, we're calling it a cumulative volume. I think we're actually going to rename that just the volume. Uh, I'm going to add that. And on the right side you can see the various different parameters that you can set. Uh, let me just change a few real quick here. Now this volume profile uh, has a couple of different modes. You can uh, just see the actual amount of volume set off at each price row, or you can display it in a buy-sell pattern, which would then break out the trades uh, and color them either, uh, you know, whatever color you set, whether it's red or green for buy, red for buy, or pardon me, I think it's red for sales, green for buys. So you, some people call it split volume, cumulative volume, whatever you want to call it. It'll split out the volume uh, according to uh, the different colors you set. I'm going to add a P&L column. And let me change a few colors on here as well just so it shows up better. And I'm also going to add this notes column that we have as well. And let me move this uh, up. Hit OK. Let me actually, I'm going to replay the, the playback here. And I'm going to, uh, as you can see here, the Adding those columns, the dome uh, looks a little funny because we added those columns into a fixed width dome. So I've got to increase the size here. I can reduce the size of my price ladder, reduce the size of my P&L column, maybe make my cumulative volume column a little bit bigger. And uh, this is what, uh, did I just change something here? Well, I think you guys caught me with a, uh, let's see, there we go. Okay, so the way it basically works is that these columns are all configurable and they're resizable. And more importantly, and this is going to kind of dive into the NinjaScript stuff, these columns are NinjaScript uh, price rows. Uh, you'll you will see a, uh, a solid bar in the upper I'm not sure 20 percent of of the cell for example so it, you're not going to see SMA 20 there's not a lot of visual real estate to be able to to apply that kind of stuff but uh, you know if you know that you're going to have a purple SMA you would see a purple bar at the corresponding row hey hey Ray yep uh, my uh, my system blue screened. That's the first time that's happened in a couple of years of all of all times. So I, I don't know if there was anything super critical in the last two and a half minutes. It's not going to be in the recording, if so, because I was rebooting. So if you want to if you want to say something for the recording, you'll need to repeat it real quick. Okay, thanks, Mike. I, I think in the last two minutes I really just talked about the position column, and uh, I'm not sure how far back. Um, it was, but one of the points I simply made was that NinjaScript uh, or these columns are driven by NinjaScript. They're exposed, and people can program them. Uh, I changed the volume column from. Oh, hold on a sec! I just got a a, a cha-ching here for the auto trail kicked in. Let me just close this here. 
and I showed the different uh, buy sell version of the volume column versus just a standard volume column and I believe that was it so let's see I think oh yeah and then indicators I'm not sure how much of that was covered so let me just restate that uh, we have uh, the ability to add columns as I've shown we have the ability to add indicators in the dome although I can't show that today since it's not uh, completed uh, but the basic idea is that any uh, buddy can add any indicator available just like a standard uh, chart indicator and you pick your indicator you pick the underlying bar series and that would get displayed as a uh, bar in the I think it's the upper 20 percent of a uh, corresponding price cell so I will uh, in the because we don't have a lot of time today I just wanted to provide a, a pretty high level overview oh actually I'm showing the static superdome uh, one change I would like to mention with the dynamic superdome because I think we're, we're at about a, uh, sixty percent of those uh, of, of our users are now trading on the dynamic dome uh, there is a difference which is a significant one but one easily reverted if people don't like it and that has to do with how you interface or trigger the hold mechanism of the price ladder. For those of you trading static, you might not know what I mean, but those dynamic users do. So with NT7, you either have to click on the hold uh, label or button or press the space bar, I believe, to get the dynamic dome to hold. With NT8, we've changed that and we've done away with that. And the way it works is as soon as you move your mouse into the price ladder, it will automatically hold. So you don't have to press anything other than move your mouse into the price ladder, which you want to do anyways because you're going to place an order. Again, this is very easily revertible or we can even make it optionable. But I, I thought as a starting point, I would try this out to see. I personally find it better use usability and better use model. I'm hoping our customers would, but if you know they they come back and say no, we want the old method. We could always reintroduce that. That's not a big deal. So uh, I just wanted to uh, make that point. And with that, I'm happy to take questions uh, on the Ninja Trader Eight Superdome. Okay. All right, guys. So um, go ahead and type some questions if you have any. Let's take a look at what we have. All right, David wants to know, can the simulator use actual historical data if you hit the, and, and also if you hit the close button to kill a trade, how many ticks do you drop? Okay, uh, let me, I'm not 100% sure I understand. I, I guess the simulator is using historical data uh, in a sense that the, think of it this way. We have a simulator algorithm engine, whatever you, you want to call it, in our application. And that simulator uses market data. And it doesn't know whether that market data is coming from a real-time feed or from our playback slash market replay feed. Because to it, it's just receiving data in the same manner, whether independent of what the connection is. So the, my point is simply that if you're connected to playback, the simulation algorithm is working in the same way as the uh, as it would if it was real-time data. Okay, JL is asking: Is there a way to split up two lots in one target from the ATM? Is there okay? Is there an ability to split up two lots from one target? Yes, we have that ability in NinjaTrader Seven. And, and if uh, unless I'm misunderstanding the question, uh, we you can uh, basically split targets with Ninja Trader Seven. It's in the help guide. I can't recall, you know, it's an 800-page help guide exactly what topic to look for. Uh, but if you can't find it, fire in an email to support at NinjaTrader.com, and they'll be able to to point you in the right direction rather quickly. Okay. Uh, just to reiterate, MIT stands for Market If Touched for you guys that uh, were asking me about that. So, Ray, do you want to explain basically what happens with an MIT order? Yeah, absolutely. It's real, really simple to understand. Uh, simply put, 
Think of it like a stop market order, except on the other side of the market. So uh, stop. if you wanted to place a buy stop order, and I'll do that right now, it looks something like this. If I try to place that stop order below the market, that buy stop below the market, it gets rejected by the exchange or even before the exchange by any broker technology that might actually uh, reject it before even sending it through to the exchange. It's not a valid order. MIT is a way to basically do the same thing but uh, on the other side of the uh, market. So when I place an MIT order, basically all it does as soon as the market trades at that price, which is uh, in my uh, screenshot, not screenshot, but in, the, in, in what you guys are seeing it, is 1789.75. As soon as it ticks at that level one time, that becomes a market order and gets filled with you know whatever potential slippage uh, uh, or price improvement you might get. It's a market order. I hope that explanation right. was clear. Sure. Tony is asking if you can arrange the columns in any order from left to right. Good question. And here's the answer. The columns to the right the, uh, of what we call the price ladder, that's the main order entry, uh, the, the buy, price, and sell column. You cannot manipulate those other than changing the size like I'm doing right now. You can't change the buy and move it to the right of the sell. And the reason is it has to do with the visuals of these order flags being set on top and the stop and targets. It, it's just uh, there's no way for us to be able to provide the consistent usability uh, without locking down those columns. Uh, the columns to the right, the P&L, cumulative volume, or notes, those are all configurable, sizable. Uh, so the way you do that is under the columns dialog, you'll see here under the left box where it says configured, I have my three applied columns. And I can, you can see here, I can add, remove, move them up or down. You know, you can have 20 columns, one column, however you want. So you have complete flexibility there. Okay. Uh, TZ asking how many domes can be open at once? In, uh, you know, the answer is infinite, but obviously directly tied to uh, resources on your, on your PC. Tim no wants, limits. Oh, Tim, sorry, go ahead. Tim wants to know uh, if the market, if touched order resides on the exchange, on the broker server, or on the local PC? That's a good question. It is local PC. Most broker technologies that we support don't support MIT orders. And, and the best of my knowledge, MIT orders are synthetic, meaning they're not exchange provided anyway. So most brokerage technologies uh, don't support that, so so it's locally simulated on your PC. Uh, Al is asking if you can drag the columns around to rearrange the order, I think. Uh, you cannot. You can only do it through that dialog window that I showed you. Okay. Uh, Lawrence wants to know how many CPU cores work best. Ooh, I guess the simple answer is as many as you can throw at it. Uh, NinjaTrader 8 is a multi-threaded user interface. And just to be clear on what that means is that if you have, let's just say, four cores on your machine, NinjaTrader will use all four cores uh, for its UI, meaning there will be four separate user interface threads. Uh, and thus, you could, for example, it, it, this is not, um, don't take my word for it, but something like this, this is a layman's explanation. If you open up a chart, the dome, the time and sales, another chart, it's conceivable that all four of those windows will be on four separate user threads. So the short of it is the more uh, CPUs that you have, the more distributed the, the load is, which is a good thing. Okay. Gary is asking about documentation for developing the custom column objects uh, that are going to be public and accessible. Is there, I think you mentioned that there's going to be documentation, is that right? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Lawrence asking um, about the graphic card. Really, the charts and stuff shouldn't be 
graphics intensive, so I don't, I don't really think that that would matter, Lawrence. Um, it's not like a game, you know, where you need a high-end video card. Uh, Mark is asking if you have the ability to add volume buttons rather than having to scroll. Volume buttons rather than having to scroll. I'm not I... sure what that means either. Okay. Maybe he's talking about the quantity button, like a like a dial pad or a quick. Oh, button. yeah. Yes. Thank okay. you for bringing that. I, you know, that's a pretty important thing. Okay, so check this out. So I'm, if I middle click in the quantity field, I get. Yeah, I guess I, I can't remember what we called this, but let's just call it a quantity pad, uh, which is configurable. So I can, for example, just plus one, plus fifty. Or that's the right side. That's the numbers with the plus side. Or on the left side, I can just select. You know, hey, I want a hundred, and then it closes, and, you, and 100 pops in there. And then if I click configure, this is where you can set up, you know, as many quantities as you want for what we call quick or increment. The quick is just you select the number and it pops in. Increment is the you know adding you know by one or by ten or whatever. So it's completely configurable and available on uh, this quantity selector. So that's a, glad somebody brought it up because uh, that was worth showing. Uh, he's also asking if you can make that um, like sticky where it stays open all the time. The answer to that is no. Uh, Pete asking if there are improvements in accuracy for backtesting longer time frames, not market replay. Yes. Uh, I'm surprised it took this long. David's asking, when is Ninja Trader 8 going to be released to everybody? And I will answer that once we're done with the, <laughs> with the dome. Okay. Uh, TZ wants to know if he can switch the buy-sell buttons to the right side of the dome. Actually, you can't. Uh, interesting. You know, in, in our design, we never even thought about that. And I... I trying to think I, oh no, actually pardon me I think we did and it was related it was quickly shut down and because it was related to the how these columns work or something I, I, I can't remember exactly but I, I guess the answer is no okay uh, that's actually the last question that's on the screen right now okay excellent we can always circle back if any questions uh, come up so let me close this down and let me Close that down as well. Go back to my uh, presentation here and let me go full screen on this. Uh, give me a sec. I know it's somewhere. Page display. There's somewhere. There. Oh, there's. Okay. It's right under. There we go. Okay. So, I, I guess. Ninja Trader is is by far the most widely used trading platform for retail futures traders, and and I, I want to just personally thank uh, you guys, the community, for your contributions over the year for helping us achieve our leadership position. Uh, there are many reasons that that I feel have led to our success, which is inc including but not limited to you know having a good product, great support, uh, a good distribution model. Uh, great partners in a, a really active and engaged community. Uh, ten years ago when we started, the idea uh, of extending the platform came in the form of, or pardon me, I should say, ten years ago, general ideas of how trading platforms worked for extendability came in the form of proprietary scripting languages. Uh, Tristation's easy language obviously comes to mind and predominantly focused on producing charting indicators or trading systems or strategies. Um, at the time, you know, myself and my partner, uh, Dirk, we felt that the approach was uh, limiting and also not reflective of the modern technology available, specifically .NET. And as a result, we were the first ones to popularize the use of, of C-sharp uh, Dot net. What what is that thing? Hold on a sec. Who knows the detected computer performance is slow? <laughs> okay, I don't know what that is. Uh, give me a sec. Keep current color scheme. Okay. 
Never seen that one before. Uh, let me know. I'm, I'm not sure what that meant, but I'm assuming everybody can still hear me. Uh, so, yeah. okay, good. So I guess what I was saying is we were the first ones to popularize the C Sharp uh, .NET w using a true event-based programming model for indicator and strategy development. And as, as you guys all know, uh, our development community to me is first rate in the depth and breadth of the add-ons, indicators, strategies, uh, you know, applications that are available both user submitted and commercially uh, is to me just simply amazing. It, it still blows my mind how much stuff is available, uh, you know, third party for, for our platform. And my, my point really is just simple, is that we took a risk a long time ago by uh, taking a non-proven approach and attempting to provide modern and higher levels of indicator and strategy development. And I believe we succeeded. And what I see now is that there's you know, others following. You know, a lot of our competitors have gone the .NET route or have come up with .NET products. So, it, it to me, it's just a testament that that we made the right decision a long time ago. Uh, so, as the, how that relates to Ninja Trader Eight was that one of our design goals was that we wanted to uh, push the boundaries of what we labeled as officially supported. Uh, that was, let's say, you know, years ago when we started down this Ninja Trader Eight path, but uh, this summer, we expanded this idea by reflecting on everything that I just talked about, meaning our past decisions to to kind of to to be pioneers in the industry. And uh, what we decided was to make Ninja Trader Eight a true platform for trading application development. The idea simply was to expose as many aspects of our uh, underlying framework as possible in order to enable developers to build rich and integrated trading applications within the NinjaTrader platform, uh, limited only by their imagination. Uh, I, I personally feel that this approach is in the best interest of all our stakeholders, uh, but in order to do that, I've had to deliberately push back NinjaTrader 8 release, uh, and this, in addition, was coupled by a few business opportunities that popped up here uh, back around the summertime that required me to also temporarily reallocate our development resources. Uh, we were originally trying to get a public version out around this time, and we're actually really not far off by any stretch right now. What I can tell you is uh, that the last major piece we're currently working on right now is charts. You know, there's a few uh, loose ends here and there, like the indicator. Uh, implementation in the dome. There's some alerting things that we're working on, and, and just loose ends here and there. But right now, uh, charts is is the the last remaining thing that we're working on, and, and uh, so we we expect um, to have something uh, soon. Uh, and uh, I guess the point simply is we're we're at the, the tail end of the development process. Uh, so that being said, the next part of uh, today's presentation is to present clear ideas of how we are expanding NinjaScript and providing some color around expected changes so that uh, those of you who do develop um, at least to have uh, a clear idea of uh, what we're putting into the product, where the changes might be, uh, and I'm here to answer questions, of course. So any questions on what I just said? If not, I'll, I'll just dive in. Uh, there's yeah, there, there's a couple questions that are not related. There is one here. David's asking if, um, well, I would say actually no. None of them are really related to what you said. <laughs> so you want to if you want to open it up in general, or you want to wait. No, let's let's wait. Let's let's get into the ninja script stuff. So okay. Uh, well, Again, let me just ask okay. David, because it's kind of, he, it's NinjaScript. He wants to know if the current third-party indicators are going to work with Ninja 8. So we could start with that. <laughs> uh, I guess the answer, I actually do answer that in an upcoming slide. Okay. Uh, but I'll just make the statement now. NinjaTrader 7 NinjaScript objects, whether they're indicators, uh, strategies, or what have you, are not directly compatible with NinjaTrader 8 which is no different uh, than what we went through with NinjaTrader 6.5 to NinjaTrader 7, simply meaning that you can't take a NinjaTrader 
uh, 7 indicator and simply import it into NinjaTrader 8. That won't work. Uh, and part of this discussion today is to give those people an idea of what's all involved of, of making them work in NinjaTrader 8. And that is highly dependent on what the original developer has done. Uh, if, if it's something simple, like for example, a NinjaTrader, uh, I'll give you a good example. Let's say a SMA indicator, our, our simple moving average indicator. The change to convert that from NinjaTrader 7 to NinjaTrader 8 is, is, I don't know, four minutes, five minutes worth of work. In fact, most of our system indicators all fell uh, in that scope, you know, five minutes worth of work with the exception of indicators that we rewrote uh, independent of changes that we made to make the performance better. That, that we would have done that with NinjaTrader 7 anyways. So it, it's, like I said, the simple or basic stuff, it's, 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 a, it's a quick, quick conversion. Uh, but I will get into more specifics in a little bit. So hopefully that provided at least a very clear answer that, you know, they're not compatible. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about, and probably the biggest thing from my perspective, is uh, we are going to introduce, uh, I, I call it low-level NinjaScript for now. We're, we're going to keep it under the NinjaScript brand, but this is really targeted towards advanced developers. And the functionality we're releasing is targeted for people who want to be able to develop a truly integrated application and use uh, our framework for doing so. And when I mean truly integrated application, uh, specifically is, you know, they can open up uh, NinjaTrader, go to the new menu, and just like they select new chart, they would select, for example, new my custom window. And whatever people want to build, there, there's absolutely no limitations on, on what you can build. And, and I'll get into that here as we go through some of the, the functionality that we're opening up. The first thing I, I want to talk about is the, the area of user interface. So we have a NT window class, a NinjaTrader tabs class, workspace interface, controls. All of those are going to be exposed so that you, the developer, have the ability to basically inject a window uh, into the NinjaTrader application and it looks, smells, behaves you know, saves to workspaces, the tabs work just like NinjaTrader tabs, so to the actual consumer or the user, it's uh, the use, usability in experience is no different than any of our own NinjaTrader windows. Uh, and so let, let me give an example. Let's say that I was a third-party developer or, or just a developer, and I wanted to build, I don't know, a market scanner, you know, and, and have my own graphics or charts or whatever, you could do that. I mean, like I said, there's no limitations and you can embed this into NinjaTrader. Uh, we're going to make available all of our controls. I, I should say, let me restate that, a lot of our controls. I can't say that we're going to do all of our controls, but a lot of our controls. So, for example, link button, instrument selector, account selector, and the instrument selector has a lot of functionality into it. Uh, let me just, uh, I think I still have NinjaTrader running. Give me a sec. Uh, actually, I've closed it down. Let me bring it back up. So the uh, uh, controls like a account selector, which automatically populate with all the available trading accounts. You know, if it's simulation only, you won't be, have access to the live trading accounts. You know, this is all, of course, taken care of for you. If I open up uh, just real quick, uh, let's see. Uh, I'll just open up this order ticket. Give me a sec to connect up to something here. So here I'm cl I'm clicking on our instrument selector. There's a lot of logic built into this instrument le instrument selector, so there's no need for a developer to worry about figuring out the right interface to present instruments to its uh, target audience. You know, you you can obviously use what we've built. Same thing with a quantity selector. You know that quantity pad that I showed you you know, is available. So again, you've got all this functionality built in. Uh, we're also going to provide a fixed user ID on, uh, not user ID, pardon me, UI ID on every component within the uh, interface uh, collection. So, uh, you know, if, if for example, a developer wanted to 
uh, intervene and and attach some sort of event handler. Here's a good example. Uh, when the when when I press buy on the Superdome, I want to do something after the order is placed. Do something could be anything you want, right? Just whatever. Do something. So you'll have the ability to locate that particular button on the Superdome and attach, you know, event handler to that and do what you want. <coughs> you can also use this to do automation uh, macros, for example. So if you wanted to to have uh, write some sort of a macro that uh, simulated button clicks, for example, user interface button clicks, you could do that because we're going to provide you, um, you know, the information necessary to be able to get that done. You know, properties window is another example uh, with all the logic with presets and stuff. So, so that's what I mean when I say uh, integrated application. The user interface is a key component of that and being able to, to work within our framework so that uh, the, the windows that you build uh, literally uh, work uh, you know, in harmony with NinjaTrader. So in addition to that, obviously, we need to provide other types of access so that you can build whatever you want, whether it's a new order entry interface or a scanner, like I said, a chart for you. Want to build your own chart if you want. Uh, so we also uh, provide uh, access for connection handling access to account data, which is uh, account balances, account orders. That would be the equivalent of, in a strategy, we have the ability, I think it's on, X, on, on uh, order update. Uh, same concept, except it's not limited to the strategy, but it's, you know, it's open to every single connection, every single account within that connection, and all orders within those accounts. Same goes for executions uh, and positions. Uh, market data. Actually, let me go back up. Right, okay. Market data, same concept. Uh, you can uh, subscribe to level one market data, market depth, historical data. Meaning, you know, you can request. I I need uh, one minute series from the last two months of Microsoft, and you'll get back a bars object. It'll update in real time for you. So that's what I mean. You could build a chart if you want. Uh, fundamental data. Excuse me, and news. So those are all of the uh, low-level or raw uh, classes that one would need to build really a, a trading application. You know, whatever it is you want, and and that's uh, what we what I mean by going deeper and and providing a, a real development environment that allows you to build whatever it is you want, limited only by your imagination. Uh, let me stop there, Mike, and I'll take any questions on what I just discussed before I get into Ninja Script kind of legacy stuff. Okay. Um, backing up uh, to before I blue screened, I think you were talking about uh, Ninja Trader 8 using multiple cores. Jim is asking if you can expand and compare the changes in performance between NT7 and NT8. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think the way I could explain it is this. Uh, if you take the user interface out of the equation, NT8 performance is much better than NinjaTrader 7 is. When you put the user interface on it, the user interface is uh, driven uh, by WPF. And, and let me just make a quick statement on that for those of you who are hearing this for the first time and for those of you who might not even know what, what I'm talking about. Uh, in for Microsoft, there are two technologies. The legacy technology is called WinForms. Uh, NinjaTrader 7 graphics or user interface is based off of WinForms. WinForms is a dead technology. It's not changing. It's 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 dead. It's it's uh, the shelf life is as long as people continue to use it. WPF is the let's just call it next generation technology for. <clears throat> for doing user interface. And that's what NinjaTrader 8 is based off of. Uh, and this is where anybody building uh, new desktop applications, that's, that's primarily what, what people should be using and most people are using. And WPF as a technology has a higher performance load than WinForms as a technology. Again, independent of NinjaTrader. And, and, and so as we put on the 
the uh, WPF layer, just in general, it, there's a higher uh, performance. And, and, and to put this in perspective, it's not, you know, I'm not saying, oh, okay, you're going to see a, uh, you know, 2% CPU load with wind farms, and now it's 50%. That's, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm just saying, in general, it, it, it's more expensive. So, uh, oh, and, and I'm sorry, I, I had to put a cough drop in my mouth because I, I, like Mike too, have a cold and it's kind of coincidental. Every time I do a big mic presentation, I have this cold and so my throat's starting to get really dry and so I, I don't want to start coughing into the mic all the time, so please bear, bear with me. So, uh, all right, so the WPF again is more expensive as a technology, but since we're uh, distributing the load across uh, multiple cores, uh, we get the benefit, of course, of those additional cores. So overall, um, Ninja Trader 8 is higher performing than Ninja Trader 7. So, but I, I will state this: in Ninja Trader 7, it, Ninja Trader 7 is a multi-threaded application, but the user interface is on a single thread. And so, what you might see, and I'm, I'm making numbers up here, okay? So what you might see is in Ninja Trader 7, let's say you saw 5% load. Right. In Ninja Trader 8, if you open up your task manager, you might see 10% load. But that 10% is actually distributed, you know, optimally 2.5% on four cores if you had a four core machine. So, so each individual core is actually doing less work than what one core did in Ninja Trader 7. Is that, you think yeah. that answers the question? Yeah. Um, and uh, you're, you're wanting to stay on. Uh, mainly on NinjaScript, right? We're not opening it up for everything just yet? Yeah, just uh, okay. the NinjaScript stuff, the low-level stuff I just talked about, because okay. I'm going to dive into the other Ninja Traders, NinjaScript stuff in a sec. Okay, Pete uh, asking about the debugging of NinjaScript. Uh, any improvements in this area? Yes. Uh, there is, uh, you know, I just realized why, let me, give me a sec, guys, because I think my power... Oh, no, we're okay. Yes, there is a couple of uh, different enhancements. Uh, one, uh, let me just open up the NinjaScript output window. You can see here we've got an output window with two tabs, output one and output two. Real simple change for us, but we you now have the ability to print output to either one or two tabs or one of these two tabs just to try to separate things out a little bit. That's That's one area of enhancement. Uh, the second area of enhancement is we are, and I can't remember the latest on this is, but we did some work uh, to allow uh, work in Visual Studio uh, in tandem with using Ninja Trader. And if you make changes in Ninja in the Visual Studio, somehow they're they're um, you know I don't even want to. I think it's above my pay grade at this point in time to 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 talk about how that integration works. But there's some higher level of integration with Visual Studio. That's probably the best way to explain it. Okay. Uh, I think this is still in the NinjaScript category. TZ asking about the strategy wizard. Yeah. Okay. Strategy wizard, there's a couple of things you're going to see. First of all, we have what we call a, let's call it a skeleton builder. So we're going to have a lot of different NinjaScript objects that we're going to support officially. And when you want to code these things, you'll you know go into the editor and you'll pop up a wizard and it'll say something like, "What do you want to build?" You know, indicator strategy, uh, Superdome column, and it'll walk you through and give you a a code skeleton so that you can start coding with. Uh, so that's 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 a one thing. On the for non-programmers, we will we are improving the visual strategy builder. I think we're calling it strategy builder to uh, be more comprehensive than the NinjaTrader 7 strategy builder. Uh, this particular feature, I'm not sure at this time if it's going to make it pr uh, for beta. So because this is one of those features that is tagged as non-critical, uh, we're actually just uh, finishing up, the product management team is just finishing up uh, the specification on this. Uh, and it'll be thrown to development and l likely it'll probably be introduced sometime during the beta phase. 
I'm just saying it's not going to be available as soon as we make it publicly available, but we anticipate having it for production. But uh, So anyways, there's okay. the answer on that. Mark asking, is there the ability to do things like embed a button in the market analyzer that when clicked would launch a strategy for that instrument? Absolutely. Okay. Greg asking if uh, there's communication between strategies, is that possible? Not, not uh, with anything that we've created. To, to, we, we haven't provided any, any classes, methods, properties to, to enable something like that. But there's, I mean, I, I know people are doing that already with Ninja 7, so Greg, you can look around for help on that, just with, you know, C-sharp. Yeah, I was just going to say, well, that's what, thanks for that, Mike. I, I, that's what I meant, is that we don't do it, but you could do it, and I was going to say that. <laughs> right. Um, Greg also asking if there are changes to the I orders object. Uh, is it now inheriting from the I innumerable class? Uh, good question, Greg. Actually, uh, uh, I've got that. Let me hold off on that because it's it's part of other things. I'm going to talk a slide or two downstream. Okay. I'm trying to stick with just the Ninja Script stuff um, or the stuff that you've covered. Doug asking if there are event notifications on tick downloads. I'm not sure if he's talking about that he can access as a programmer or, or if he just means from a GUI standpoint. I, I'm going to take the assumption since we're talking programming that it's a programming question. Uh, sim simply put, the answer is, is yes. There's, uh, uh, you know, when you request bars, you get a bars object back in return and you can then subscribe to a uh, bars dot bars update event which then uh, gets raised every time uh, new bars are added or or bars have changed so as, as each real-time tick comes in that updates a bar you you get that that event fired okay trader Joe asking if he can use the expanded ninja script to show or hide tabs or windows uh, and move tabs between different windows. We don't support moving tabs between different windows. Uh, what you can basically do, and and this is definitely lower level than than I'm uh, versed in, but simply put, the the tab functionality has, you know, well, pardon me. We have you know tabs that have functionality, and I don't know what you can and cannot do programmatically with them. I only really understand what you can do from a user interface standpoint, and I know that we don't support moving a tab from one window to another window. Part of that has to do uh, with how multi-threading across UIs work. The short of answer is you can't take uh, an object and, uh, you know, if, 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 one, if window A is on thread A and window B is on thread B, you can't take a tab from window A and throw it on Window B, unless you do some sort of serialization and and rebuild it in in Window B, and anyways, that's uh, might be a little bit more answer, but the answer is uh, you can't do that, uh, and I don't know all the features of the tab uh, okay. class itself. So guys, we're we're trying to stick mainly to Ninja Script right now. Uh, there's going to be an open Q and A later, right? Okay, let's let's do this because we're at the hour mark already. Let me uh, drive down the road here a little bit. Okay, so supported Ninja Script objects. Here's what we know right now. We're going to officially support historical data importers. We, we, uh, these are actually exposed already in Ninja Script. We just don't provide any documentation. So if anybody wants to write their own, you know, importer for any type of format, you can do that. Uh, optimizer fitness types. We already support. Uh, pardon me. We expose that. This is like max drawdown, net profit, things like that. Uh, we just don't document that. We are going to officially support that. Optimizers, again, uh, there have been some of you who have written, you know, your own genetic optimizer, for example. We're going to document that so that uh, we encourage people writing some, who knows, particle swarm optimizer, or who, who, who knows what, what else other uh, approaches there might be. Uh, strategy analyzer performance metrics, this is your request, Mike. This is uh, on the strategy analyzer summary page. Uh, all of the metrics that show up there, we uh, uh, 
pulled that out and provided a way for people to build their own metrics. Very nice. Uh, share adapters. This is a new feature for Ninja Trader 8. Uh, simply put, uh, all, if not all, most windows are going to have like right-click share, and different windows will share different things. So a chart, for example, uh, obviously would share an image, and then you can share it to whatever destination you want. By default, we're going to have email, which is pretty straightforward. Facebook, Twitter, and stock twits. Those are the four, let's say, adapters that uh, or options that you will be able to share data from NinjaTrader out to. And uh, these adapters, again, are NinjaScript objects. They'll be fully documented. So as an example, Mike, I don't know where things are at, but you've got that charting API or, or chart image API, right? Yeah. Yeah. So can see, you know, so you could do something like that. Right. You know? Yeah. Any any of the programmers could just do it right now and they could post on on BMT, so that's cool. Uh, strategies, obviously that's a given. Superdome columns, showed you guys uh, the three examples. We'll ship uh, with the product. Market analyzer columns, uh, that's always been an InterScript object. The only difference now is we're going to document and, and support that. Uh, application skins, you know, this is really a cosmetic thing. You know, I, it, it, I just don't know if people you know will take the time to you know make a jungle colored version of ninja trader who knows but it's it's going to be exposed uh, out there uh, so on charts indicators a given bar types uh, we're going to support that officially chart styles chart style is a whether it's a line a candlestick a mountain which is new for ninja trader 8 plot styles that's new for NinjaTrader 8. We're going to expose that as an InterScript object. Chart markers. This is a uh, right click, and uh, you know you can put on arrows. Uh, I can't remember all the different chart markers we have, but you know little items to mark your charts. Drawing tools. I think this one, in my opinion, is is very interesting. Uh, so all of our drawing tools will be exposed as NinjaTrader objects, which then allows you to build you know unique drawing tools. So I, I can already think of some really unique Fibonacci type stuff or Elliott Wave type analysis stuff that we may not have out of the box right now, but would allow people to build these tools. Uh, on render, uh, this is uh, the equivalent to NinjaTrader 7's on plot, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a subsequent slide. We are also going to support uh, chart control. So this again is some more advanced stuff, but we have in NinjaTrader 7 an object called chart control. And on that chart control, there are a number of properties and methods, getting brush colors. I just threw a couple of them on there as an example. Axis color, margin, bottom, margin, right, canvas, left, canvas, right. There's a, there's a ton of them. Uh, so this will uh, be documented uh, and supported. And this generally is useful for people who are doing custom painting or custom drawing in the uh, NinjaTrader 7 on plot method. So, uh, so this gives you an idea of, of the expansion and the, the depth and breadth, I guess, of what we're looking or what we will be supporting in the uh, uh, NinjaScript space. And the basic, again, idea is that whether you just want to build a simple indicator or you want to go and build you know your own application. I say application because it could be anything from an order entry window to a chart to whatever you want. The NinjaTrader platform is going to enable that. And for uh, developers, uh, you know, it, it's it's really a, a um, an open canvas, so to speak. Okay. So, I, oh, go ahead. Oh, I, I was going to say you've you've impressed me, Ray, and that's not that's not easy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Good job, man. Um, so, what changes can you expect? As I had said earlier, Ninja Script, uh, script Seven objects will not import into Ninja Trader Eight, and I want to just take a brief moment to give you guys my my thoughts on that. It's a bit of a double-edged sword, right? Because obviously, all of those developers, whether you're building your own stuff or commercial developers. Uh, the, the, the quick thing is, wow, okay, so I got to rewrite my stuff, and now it's not compatible, it's extra work, and 
it's inconvenient and you know yes you're right all of the above but what do you get well the, the problem is if you try to make things compatible in my opinion you hinder your ability to do the things you want in the way it really probably should be done because you've got to cater to to preserving legacy stuff so our our thought was never let's just you know redo everything and not care about what anybody else built that's definitely not the case we have preserved as much stuff as as we we can and like i said from a simple perspective indicators and stuff uh the change syntax changes are are really minimal and it, it it's you know a, a minutes kind of thing if you built something where you've uh a ventured into what we call unsupported territory. I, I can't even tell you what may or may not break because, again, it was never supported in the first place. Uh, but if you're in that area, you know, I, I, I can't, I can't tell you what has changed. Uh, if you're doing things where you're drawing custom stuff, I, I, here's a good example. Let's say uh, uh, there's some of you who have written, I've seen, uh, like market profile tools, right? Uh, there's some third-party commercial available. I've seen some self-coded ones. Uh, that requires coding in our in the NinjaTrader 7 indicator plot method. And because the plot method uses WinForms and NinjaTrader 8 on render, just as the name change uses uh, WPF, it, it's a completely different technology. So you're, you, you have to expect that it's completely different. It's a rewrite for you guys. However, the concept is the same. And what I mean by that is the, the, the way that NinjaTrader 7 chart plotting works, although it's WPF, conceptually it's doing the same thing as uh, NinjaTrader 7. Hopefully I said that right. So, uh, so my philosophy and thought was always, you know, NinjaTrader 7 is started in 03 and the reality is it probably will have a shelf life for I, I don't know if it's another three years four years five years who, who, who knows you know your guess is as good as mine um, but let, let's even go to the outside of that and say it's another five years so we're at 2018 so we've got a 15 year old product out there right by the time it's dead so if you take a look at Ninja Trader 8 which is really a next generation platform that's going to take us for the next, let's say, 15 years. Now we're at 2028, right? And so to me, we got to do it the way that we feel it's right to do it today. And, and as a result, you know, we made changes, um, thoughtful changes that we believe will be the right thing to do for another 15 years. And so uh, as a result, we, like we did with NinjaTrader 6.5 to 7, we will publish a comprehensive code breaking changes document. Uh, and it will contain things like this. So, uh, and this, what I've put on these slides is not everything, it's just some examples that I wanted to provide you so you guys got a sense of things uh, that might be coming. So, any type of bool property such as overlay or auto scale has been renamed to have is in front of it. Again, you know, it's a pretty straightforward thing. So, if you said overlay equals true, you'd now have to change overlay and put an IS in front of it. So that's a pretty trivial thing. So uh, and, and that's across the board. So if, you know, if there's I don't know how many a hundred different bool properties, they all would have this minor change. Uh, we've replaced a number of different things. Calculate on bar close. I bring that up because that's probably the uh, the biggest one. Uh, it's a quick change. Uh, what we did, instead of calculate on bar close being true or false, it's now calculate with three modes, on bar close, on price change, or on each tick. So uh, the change is pretty simple, uh, but there is obviously some logic uh, behind it. Uh, the next, probably the biggest one, the most work that you'll have to do, uh, in NT7 we have the initialize method, and then we also have additional methods on startup on termination that most people probably didn't use and all of this has been wrapped into one new method call called on state changed and that will fire every time the state of an object changes and the states I, I can't remember exactly there might be five or six different states there's state one is set defaults and there's state configure state historical uh, and so forth and we're 
you know, going to put clear, obviously, documentation on what each state means, what you would uh, do in each state, and all NinjaScript objects, whether it's a Superdome column or a market analyzer column, all uh, have this logic. So basically, from a programmer standpoint, we have a, uh, I, I can't remember what the class name is called, let's just call it NinjaScript base. And this NinjaScript base has this on state change method and a Superdome column inherits from NinjaScript, NinjaScript base as the strategy, as an indicator, and so forth. Uh, you know, a couple of other examples. You know, uh, we have add method, which you can then uh, pass in a new plot or a line. We've broken those out. I can't remember exactly the reason why, uh, and we do have, we do track the reasons why. I just don't know off the top of my head. Uh, you know, change to add plot, add line. Again, you know, minor things here in terms of of, of uh, making the changes. Grid category and description on properties, for example, are replaced by new uh, .NET 4.0 attributes as well. Are, they're, they're localized as well. So with NinjaTrader 8, as is, is some of you may already know, it's regionalizable. Uh, and we, we um, I guess, support that uh, through various different aspects of the product. Uh, next page, uh, on order update, on execution update, on position update, all have new signatures. Somebody had asked uh, what's happening with the I order, I execution, I position interfaces. Um, they're being replaced. So uh, on order update, instead of passing back a I order interface, it actually passes back the order object itself. So it, we're just passing back the actual internal order object that we're using throughout the product uh, and getting rid of the, the kind of uh, additional layer uh, that, that exists there in NinjaTrader 7. And again, that's true uh, with executions, positions. Uh, plot turned into on render, and this is, I, I guess I talked about this uh, before regarding the fact that the technology is changing from WinForms to WPF, but conceptually is the same. I, I think for most people, advanced programmers, this is going to be the area, uh, if you programmed indicators that are doing custom plotting, uh, which is definitely not the majority, it definitely is a minority, but this is the brunt of, of probably where the effort's going to be if you have to recode it into Ninja, or if you're going to recoded in NinjaTrader 8 will be uh, in, in this particular method. Uh, and, and then there, there are a number of logic changes here or there. Somebody asked about the back testing. Is it going to be more accurate? Uh, the answer I said was yes. Uh, you know, without getting in, into the logic, uh, the short of it is uh, there, there, there's um, a number of different approaches that are taken to provide a higher level of fidelity when it comes to running back tests. And, and we'll document all that as well, of course, when, when we release a product. And, and there's also some changes around the sequence and how to add custom data series. And this ties back to uh, the on state changed method. There's definitely different states where you would want to do something. And if you did something in the incorrect state, there could be adverse uh, behaviors and we'll again spell spell that out uh, in in documentation that we we put forth so uh, I think yeah that was the end of the slide like I said there, there's definitely a lot more uh, itemized items but I, I just wanted to give the development community uh, an idea of where the changes are forthcoming and highlight some of the more uh, what I felt important changes that that you guys just need to be aware of. So yep. uh, with that said, I'll take questions. Yeah, I think this is great. Good job, Ray. Very good job. All right, guys. Um, let's just try to run through some general questions. I, I know one came up multiple times. Um, I can't remember who asked, but uh, basically the ability to write your own data feed connector. Yeah, that's a you know, really good question. And here's the answer on that. The, our ability to distribute and partner with strategic partners is dependent on uh, market data feed and brokerage adapters. So, so meaning, you know, I have very strong relationships, as you guys know, with 
partners such as Maris and AMP, FXCM, and it, I don't want to dilute those relationships. It's, it's just as important as having a community and active users. I also have to have the, the brokerage partners at the same time or the market data partners. If I open up the data feed and brokerage adapters to allowing anybody to connect to anything they want, I dilute and undermine that part of my business strategy, and that's why we never do it. Okay. Eduardo asking if he could create a window that would basically be like a chart in the center, and then it's got a dock off the side of it, um, maybe like his own version of a custom chart trader, and then he could even maybe attach like his own version of a superdome, superdome to it. Is that... You know, all those things are possible. Anything is really possible. I, I mean, it. it, it, it yes, I, <laughs> I, I can't answer. You know, I'm not saying it's easy. You know, but we provide you the access and the exposure. Um, you can grab a window, grab a button, change the button. I mean, you, you really, you know, it's it's a little bit. Uh, how would I say it? Uh, it's a little bit of a double-edged sword. And what I mean by that is. When we first introduced NinjaScript C Sharp, my biggest concern at the time was, wow, okay, this is really access at runtime for anybody to code anything they want and write two lines of code and basically write a loop and cause NinjaTrader to hang. And that's going to happen and everybody's going to say that NinjaTrader sucks. And that was my biggest fear. And the decision was, well, I think that the gain is going to be, you know, the juice is worth the squeeze. And obviously, I, th I think we were right on that. Uh, and it took a while because, you know, right now, and, and Mike's community has, has been great for this as well, as people run into problems, a lot of the, most people come and say, hey, have you checked your code? Are you sure you haven't done some bad code, right? And 99% and of, of performance issues here in our support team are always uh, come back down to bad code. So where I'm getting at is is the same thing here. We're providing you know open access to the platform, you know, and, and somebody could easily, you know, grab a dome, an open dome, grab a button, and change the size of the button to be the size of the whole dome. I mean, you could you could do stuff like that. Um, and 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 my point simply is that because you can do anything, the upside is well, you can do anything. And and my hope is that in time, there's going to be in, in just really amazing yeah. applications built. I think um, you're right. It's, I think there's a lot of creative people that are, that are going to really take advantage of this. Uh, Greg is asking if uh, compilation inside of Visual Studio is going to be enough to run the code or does it need to be recompiled inside of NT? I, Greg, I wish I could answer that question for you. I, I just I don't know the answer to that. Okay. Um, uh, also, Greg asking if there's a way to dynamic, dynamically add a new plot or object? Ooh, uh, I can't answer that, Greg. I remember, I remember discussing there was definitely some limitations around adding, and I can't remember if it was plots or data series or some limitations around that that they need to be defined um, uh, at, at I think like uh, configuration stage, but, but I, I just can't answer that one. It's it, that was like a year and a half ago, and, and that's why I just right. don't recall exactly the details. All right, guys, I'm I'm uh, reading questions from about 25 minutes ago, so please bear with us and don't repeat. Uh, Doug asking if there are any multi-threaded issues to be aware of. Not well. There's definitely. Let me think about that. I guess I will I will defer that question until such time that we actually publish documentation and that we gather the you know collective know-how from our developers on threading issues that they've run into. Like I said, the one thing that I did mention that that I was very well aware of was that the inability to to take you know one UI object and move it to another thread, uh, and that was a the reason why I know that is because I wanted to have the ability to, to you know, drag and drop a tab from one window to another window. That was part of my spec, and and we were 
you know, we ran into that limitation very early on. Um, and, and one of the things I know we're doing as well to make things thread safe is uh, with the, for example, the bars request or uh, requesting market data, uh, the methods that we will expose handle um, internal multi-threading uh, issues because it's possible that market data is coming in on one thread, uh, but you subscribe on a UI thread that's a different thread and somehow it's all, I guess, kind of shielded from you. But we would uh, put something in documentation around all this okay. anyways. Dan is asking if port portfolio level back testing is going to be supported? No. Um, Mark asking, well, he's saying that most of the new uh, Intel chips are four cores or eight threads with hyper threading, but now there's uh, six core, 12 threads. So is NT8 going to be able to take advantage of that? I can't answer that. Uh, Mark wanting to know if there's uh, any new licensing changes for the NT vendor facility. I know that there are some changes, Mark, uh, around that, but I don't know specifics on that. And I don't believe, uh, and I, I can't even say if they're breaking or not. I don't think they are, but I, I want to say there's improvements because I know uh, we went through a spec process on that but I don't know the details on that. Mr. Yu and a few others asking about mobile integration. So we had a webinar in the past on that, but um, I think at that point it was undecided about whether or not uh, you would be able to run like custom indicators and, and such. Any comments on that? Yeah. Uh, we, we have a mobile, I, I guess I'll just say a mobile interface that um, I guess the question is this, are we going to expose anything there and that has not yet been discussed only because the whole uh, putting out our own mobile product is is still something that is uh, I guess in progress. We've, we've done all of the communication, we have a proxy server that sits in between a mobile app and uh, the NinjaTrader desktop running you know wherever you're running it. Uh, where we're, uh, where it's stalled at this point in time, stalled meaning it's just on hold, is the actual user interface of the HTML5. We, we, we actually have it, but as we uh, started looking at other interfaces, we, we decided to hold off to make sure we're, we're right. designing it the right way. And I mean, the good thing is that you can just write it yourself if you really want to. Um, Several people asking, and sorry, I hope you can still hear me okay. My voice is just about gone. Several people asking .NET 4 or 4.5. It's right now we're internally coding on .NET 4, and uh, I'm just looking because the developer is right in front of my office, but my lead guy is not there, um, so I can't ask him if we're going to 4.5 or, or not. Um, so I, I know we're on 4. I, I, I can't answer if we're going to 4.5. Doug asking if bars sense entry will be available in the market analyzer column. Bars sense entry. I know that we don't have a column that uh, out of the box that provides a bar sense entry. However, you could code that yourself uh, in the market analyzer column. Uh, because you have access to bars and you have access to positions, uh, so or or executions. So I, I, it, you it could be coded, but we don't have anything out of the box for that. Jeffrey asking if there are improvements to the point and figure charting. Uh, good question, and the answer is uh, not even uh, at that point yet with the with the charts, meaning the. The um, exotics it, right. haven't even gotten there. Okay, so I mean, you, you, I'm sure that you're aware that exotic bar types have become very popular, and I would say one of the strengths of Ninja Seven, um, since most other platforms can't do it. Do you, any high-level ideas in this area, or you just just no comment yet? Yeah, no. Yet? I mean, okay. I I can say that. You know, just like Ninja Trader Seven, you can do what you want. My my dilemma always is, you know, do I build something or do I rely on the community to build it? Right. Uh, 
So a good example would be the, uh, oh boy, what are those called? The, um, the market profile charts, right? You know, there's a number of third-party applications out there, or I could build it myself and give it away for free, or I can build it myself and charge. I, I, I don't know on that yet. Um, but what I can say is with NinjaScript, we are supporting chart styles and uh, bar types officially. So whatever exotic, you know, if there's something we do that doesn't meet the demand, you know, it can always be done. Whether we do it or not, we can provide official support for doing that. Uh, that's one thing. And the number, the second thing with charts is, uh, like point and figure, for example, one of the things, uh, some of you may, may know this, uh, with NinjaTrader 7, every trading session, bars start new. And I, I don't know if, if uh, my, well, let me, let me restate it. So if you have a bar that spans across a session, right? So a bar starts on session one, but it doesn't close until session two. With NinjaTrader 7, we cut that bar and we start the session with a brand new set of bars. So we rebuild the bars for that session again. Uh, with Ninja, and, and the reason I bring this up is point and figure, uh, or maybe it was, not, I think it was point and figure charts. They um, uh, arguably you would want to start, uh, uh, you, you, you could have situations where bars cross over a, a session. And with NinjaTrader 8, we have the uh, option uh, for doing that. So meaning uh, part of the one property on the data series is that you can set, do you start bars brand new for each trading session or do they carry across trading sessions? I don't know if that yeah. helps a little bit, but. Yeah. John asking if we can plot into the future on a chart. Ah, shoot, I should have had the answer for that one. I, I'm sorry, that's, I, you know, I know that one gets asked all the time. I want to say with NinjaTrader 7, the answer is no, I believe. And I want to say that with NinjaTrader 8, the answer still might be no, but don't hold me to that. John uh, asking if he can, I'm trying to understand, I think he's asking if he can have an indicator that through whatever method has drawn objects on the chart, um, can those objects persist if the indicator is removed? Ah, I see. The be I don't believe we've changed any behavior there for NinjaTrader 8. So I guess the answer, at least to my understanding, is no. Um, Greg asking if we can still have our own strategy base inheriting the NT strategy base. I don't see any reason why you couldn't. Um, oh, one thing just uh, with strategy class in NT8, uh, it can uh, draw on a chart. So it will have lines and plots and stuff. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Uh, Louis or Luis asking uh, Windows 8.1 fully supported? I can't, you know, we, we test the, uh, let me think, I, I guess I, the answer is yes. You know, we, we do support Windows 8. I don't think Windows 8.1 is unsupported for us right now, so I don't he, see any reason. Pete asking um, if third-party developers are going to have access to an alpha. We're going to provide third-party developers access as soon as, as we can. And uh, my preference would be earlier than everybody else. I, I can state that, um, but that's not a, a guarantee because the uh, ultimately the timing of getting all this done and the documentation um, you know, I don't see us necessarily having all the documentation ready months ahead of, of uh, you know, of the beta. I don't see anybody else asking this. I'm kind of surprised, so I'll, I'll ask. But are, is there any um, change to the uh, obfuscation method or the, are you locked into one particular vendor or is, you know what I'm saying, has, it, has that changed? Is there going to be a new purchase required in that front? 
Hey, a good question. The simple answer is yes. Here's here's what's going on. Uh, we work with a company called Secure Team, which provides a product CLI Secure, and we provide that. Well, they provide it to you guys for free, limited to protecting NinjaScript. Uh, we pay them for that. Obviously, you know, we pay them a yearly annual license. Uh, with NinjaTrader 8, uh, we are working with them uh, right now as we speak. Uh, on a, a new licensing scheme term, I should say, that brings uh, all of their different technologies for uh, protection. And we are going to provide, let's say, clear uh, guidelines as to what we've tested, because under their protection, they've got, let's just say, I'm going to pick 10 different features. You know, control flow obfuscation, virtual machine, this, you know, uh, there's a number of different things. A lot of this stuff has performance penalties. Uh, so uh, we've given them basically you know, guidelines as to where the performance needs to be within, uh, acceptable performance increases that we're willing to accept for various different protection mechanisms and features. Uh, so for example, under licensing, I believe we're using a higher level of protection that is very costly in performance, but since it's a you know, a, a limited uh, use at runtime. It doesn't matter if it's even twice as as, as uh, expensive in performance, right? Because we you run it one time and you do a license check and it's done, for example. And uh, but what to, in order to get to get this higher level of of features, uh, basically the licensing terms have changed, and the way it works is simply this: uh, anybody who wants to use uh, this technology to protect their uh, assemblies uh, will need to pay CLI Secure an annual $100 fee, uh, maintenance fee, let's call it. So you, you pay them 100 bucks a, a, a year, and you get access to uh, their product limited to NinjaTrader, and, but you got to pay them every year 100 bucks. And I, I right. personally, myself, I think that's pretty reasonable. Sure. And, and, and this is an $800 product. So I'm still paying, you know, a lot of money to them <laughs> to get that price down. Yeah, that sounds totally fine to me. Um, AK asking if the uh, code breaking changes the document, if that's going to be released prior to the beta or not. Uh, I, if we knew with certainty that what's in that document was not subject to change, or limited change, then then I, I have no problem putting that out there. And I did think about that today, uh, so I guess I'll leave it at that. It's it's definitely on my mind because I definitely want to give you guys advance notice. But I, you know, right now, you know, it's it, you know we could say, oh, we want to change, you know, this name to that name. So uh, until you know, we're pretty comfortable. Um, right. I won't release it. Gary asking uh, kind of a follow-up. So is this document, this um, code-breaking document, is that going to just say this is what's broken, or is, is there going to be some sort of example on how to recode a particular function to NT8? I, I would say that historically our documentation is – pretty good and we try to provide examples where we think they're needed so I don't see uh, that this document would be any different in terms of, of the spirit of how we document things uh, we haven't you know I, I have a document now with it obviously but it's right. pretty raw uh, and, and so you know anything self-explanatory will be self-explanatory anything like this on state changed for example um, that's 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 a, a uh, you know, you, you need to know how that works, and we'll definitely be documenting that pretty clearly. Right. Um, I'm surprised no one has asked, so I'll ask on behalf of everybody, the uh, price, any price changes or licensing changes for the end user? Not that we anticipate at this point in time. Uh, Eric asking, can he have a separate data feed so that his chart and Superdome are independent of each other? The answer is dependent on instrument type and data type, meaning you can't 
specify I, I, I want to have Microsoft in Dome A coming from feed A and Microsoft on chart coming from feed B. You can't do that. What you can do is say I want all futures instruments to use data feed A for real time and all stock instruments to use data feed B. Actually, let me double check that. Here, I'll just pull it up so you can, I guess I can answer it by visual. Uh, so, basically, uh, on my screen you see uh, under tools options, so if I want, uh, let's say, futures, I want uh, big tick, you know, but for stocks I want uh, kinetic. That's how you would do it. And it's broken down by instrument type, as you can see, and then also by whether it's historical or real time. Okay. TZ asking if Ninja 8 is going to be available in German, and let me ask a follow-up on his behalf. You mentioned the regionalization. Is this something that um, individual NT users can contribute, you know, localization strings to you in, in their native tongue, or how do you see that happening? That, that's a good question. I don't know the answer to that. Uh, we never talked about that here in development, so I, I don't even know if that's possible, but uh, let me get to the German question. So here you can see uh, you have a language, and you then can select you know whatever available uh, languages we have. So if I select German, I hit OK. Uh, I've got to restart it since on restart uh, it uh, has to read a new resource file. It's the uh, where all the translation comes in, and um, now you get German. <laughs> there you go. Cool. Uh, let's see. Greg, uh, I, I, I'll go ahead and ask this question, but I think you answered it, Ray. So is there an open beta planned for NT8? Yes. Trader Joe asking, uh, can you open some of the NT8 NinjaScript files to show them to us so we can see code examples? Absolutely. Let me change back to English uh, since my German is pretty rough. Uh, so Here's our ninja script editor. The icons are, are uh, those are going to change, uh, and then you get this ninja script explorer on the right, and you can uh, you know put in your own folders as well and stuff. So you've got more uh, organization ability with uh, ninja script. Uh, but let me just open up a SMA or EMA indicator here. Let me expand the screen. So here you can see you know I talked about on state changed. So here you can see, you know, just how this indicator, so, you know, well, I guess if somebody could take a screenshot and compare this indicator to the NinjaTrader 7 implementation, you would quickly see the difference, right? Uh, obviously, there's not a lot of code uh, in here, but you get the idea here uh, with the uh, on state change and, you know, set defaults. And here you can see, uh, like, this has to do uh, this description equals, and this is pointing to a specific uh, resource file for localization. And, and I can't remember, don't ask me questions on this because there's definitely some stuff related on here. And I should say, obviously coding, I suspect our help guide will never be changed to a local. I think we'll probably keep it in English since it's obviously programming in English. Yeah. Uh Mr. Yu asking if there's any type of a versioning system. No, there's not. Mark asking if he can license custom bar types and custom optimizers. You, if Mark, I assume he means through our vendor licensing? Yeah. I, I want to say yes, and I think that's part of the changes we made. Uh, Greg wants to know when the... Uh, public beta should be expected. 
Uh, same answer as I gave before, <laughs> which <laughs> which was we're at the tail end of development, and you know it's you know we're nearly there, and I I, I just don't want to give you a, a committed date. I, I mean, I just want to say you know it's important to us to get this out, um, but it's for as many people as as I get. Hey, we want to have Ninja Trader Eight. I also get. Hey, man. Ninja Trader Seven, I'm good. You know, make sure you do it right. Don't rush it. Speaking of that, I, I believe there was a question early on that uh, I skipped because it wasn't about Ninja Script, and the question was, can I run Ninja Trader Seven and Ninja Trader Eight concurrently? You yes, absolutely. The we will allow you to run application concurrently, but I can't speak for those brokers who may or may not allow you to connect concurrently. Does that make sense? Yes. Pete asking, uh, is there a, uh, I'm not, okay, hang on. Let me read this. There is a vendor that enables execution of orders on their servers, possibly kinetic, but it's, it's definitely not kinetic because <laughs> you don't execute. But uh, will, will this be available? See, okay, I guess he's, okay, he's asking about OCOs. Any any changes to uh, brokerages that support OCO orders, or, uh, or native native or server side? That's the word I'm looking for. Server side OCOs. It's always a hot topic. People always want to know where their orders are. I see. Uh, simple answer is nothing uh, has changed between Ninja Trader Eight or Ninja Trader Seven in that respect. I you know CQG has uh, OCO order server side big tick does. Uh, I believe Sendfire is going to be supporting that uh, here shortly as well. Interactive Brokers does. Uh, so my point in, in saying that is that the bulk of our user base already has server-side OCOs. Right. Jim wants, sorry, Jim wants to know um, any changes relative to running a 64-bit version of NT? Uh, Nothing that sticks out in my mind at this time. Doug wants to know if uh, all of the toolbars and I, I guess ribbon interface or whatnot, those are all uh, attachable or programmable. He can he can do whatever he wants with those, and you're going to document it. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, you know they're they're not detachable. Uh, well, you know, I, I guess I can't even say that because I don't even know how you know in how these uh, objects are implemented uh, because we've got for example in this ninja script editor as you can see you know we're putting uh, icons in the actual caption bar and I don't know how that's been implemented but me meaning is that a, a WPF uh, toolbar or menu system I, I, I just don't know but what I do know is that all UI elements are accessible uh, thus allowing you to manipulate it how you see fit, you know. Right. Okay. Uh, any, Greg's asking, is there any change to overfills? There. So what, what do you call that with NT7 or unmanaged orders, right? Is that part of that? Well, yeah, overfills occur, s simply put, occur obviously when let's say you have a, a, an OCO pair and well I say it in a different way an overfill occurs when a order that you intended to can or that you want to cancel gets filled you know it's it's an unwanted fill right and with Ninja Trader 7 I think our standard behavior is we kill the strategy or something terminate and there's been discussion around that or there had been and I can't recall what changes we made in this area because the strategy, uh, specification, implementation, I mean th this is literally almost two years ago. That's why if it sounds like I don't know what I'm talking about, I just don't recall because it was such a long time ago and, and this project, Ninja Trader 8, you know, there's just so much, you know, so much going into this um, that it's just hard to remember all the nitty-gritty details, especially I, I don't do the product management uh, detail by detail, like I did with every version, including Ninja Trader 7. I have a, a team of two other people 
uh, that take the lead and I jump in kind of at the high level and make sure it's going in the, in the direction I want it to. So I, I just don't recall the details right. on that. Pete is asking, uh, is there some type of a, like a, I can't think of what this is called, but a line by line stepping system in the debugger so that he can go line by line in his code? Uh, no, that's not, not possible uh, with uh, NinjaTrader directly. Okay. Noah wanting to know if he'll be able to create separate replay accounts so that he can replay different markets simultaneously but then analyze them separately. Hmm. Good question. Um, let me see. I'm just seeing if I could figure that out real quickly. I want to say no because we didn't do that yeah, I, I don't think that's the case. I believe we only allow one playback account. I, I just went to the location. I thought if we did support that, it would be here, but it's, I only see simulation accounts. Uh, so I, I don't okay. believe that's the case. So here's a question uh, for, for myself. You had mentioned one of the things that I asked for was the custom performance metrics in the back test reports, but do those, do those carry over to any of the reporting mechanisms? Uh, no, it only shows up, in, and I might be not 100% clear, but on the summary tab, it's, let me think. Let me think. Because I can get a yeah. summary tab off of a chart that's got executions yeah. plotted on it. Yeah, send me an email on that, Mike, and, okay. and I can get a clear answer for, for you since this is of oh. personal interest. Okay, and I think... Let me just uh, take a quick last look here. I'm pretty sure that these last few questions are repeats. We're, we're at uh, two hours. So I, I have one final question here from TZ. I'll leave it up to you on uh, how much detail you want to go into. But the question is basically, what's new with charts? What's new with Chart Trader? <laughs> oh, that's a lot. Uh, trying to think. You know, there there is quite a lot that's new but there's actually a lot that's not and, and the reason is that you know right or wrong my impression is that our charts functionality wise you know cover you know a broad gamut it covers the the majority uh, of users and my my personal belief has always been that as soon as you start adding the features for the remaining you know percentage points you start introducing bloat and clutter, and it takes away from, um, let's just say that the the minimalistic approach. I don't know if I'd go that far, but you know, you 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 start adding feature on top of feature on top of feature on top of feature, and you got to put it somewhere, you know. And then you start thinking, okay, how do I hide this because it's getting too bloated, and it just becomes complex. So when we specified uh, Ninja Trader eight charts, we we really uh, did not make a lot of little changes uh, in, in terms of what people, uh, their use experience uh, was like with NinjaTrader 7. But we, at least I believe, we made thoughtful changes. So let me give you one example. Uh, one of the areas that, uh, you know, people have, have wanted some changes in the area uh, of uh, how we do multi-series charts and equidistant versus non-equidistant. And so we provided some more flexibility in that area, for example. Uh, another thing, we uh, provide, uh, here's a simple thing, like drawing objects, for example, have uh, their own dialog window now. So just like an indicator or a chart or pardon me, a data series or a strategy, you can right click and say drawing objects, you would see all drawing objects. You can then select a bunch of them, turn visibility off on them, hit OK. And that's actually true for uh, all objects on the chart. So there's a new, let's say, visible property. So if you've got 10 indicators on there, right, but you only want to see five at a time as an example and you don't want to remove them only to have to add them again because it's just not a good workflow you can just you know change the visibility property as an example 
so, so those are just a couple of, of, of little things. Chart Trader itself, um, there's definitely some changes in there, but it's really, um, it, it's not drastic by any means because I, I just don't feel that we're, we're not we're not building a new product because uh, people don't like what we have now. I guess is what I'm saying. And I tried to keep just like I showed you with the Superdome, where my concern was, well, people wanted to have these volume columns, but I I didn't want to do it in a way where people who didn't want it were going to pay the price because the look and feel is completely different. And when I open up that dome for the first time, you know, it's more or less, you know, a, an evolution graphically to, to what you're used to with NinjaTrader 7. I don't think people are going to go, oh my god, what the heck did they do here? Um, but if it's there, if they want the volume, it's there. And that's the same approach we, we took with, with the charts. Right. Okay, so uh, Ray, I have to tell you again that uh, I really appreciate your time and sticking with us for two hours, uh, two and a half almost, to answer everybody's question. I, I just can't, uh, my voice won't let me go anymore, but uh, we'll definitely uh, invite you back for many, many more webinars as you start rolling out the betas. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of uh, interest, lots of questions, lots to show off. And I, I just want to say really good job, and uh, I mean it. I think you've done it the right thing, and I look forward to, honestly, I look forward to see what all these uh, users are going to create. Because, you know, NT7 kind of got your foot in the door, right? And I think this is going to, you know, make it wide open, so it's going to be fun. All right, guys, I'm going to post the recording of this sometime tomorrow. Give me some time for that, please. Excellent. So, Thank thanks. you very much. Enjoy. Take care, everybody. See you guys.